Okay, good morning and welcome to today's virtual version of a virtual bridge. My name is Valerie Jackman and I'm the lead for leadership and governance at CDN. And I'm very excited today to invite Dr. Mark McCargo, who's going to be facilitating a session, leading as a host, not a hero, bringing people together for engagement, performance and results. Now, Mark is an author, a consultant and speaker, and he leads the Centre for Solutions Focus Work, uh, which is based in Edinburgh. And he's the co-author of Host and the Host Leadership Fieldbook. Now, Mark um, says that leading in the 21st century, and we all know this, it means engaging your people, um, getting the most out of them, and connecting them both with the work and with each other. And Mark claims that the good news is that we already know how to do this because it's a bit like hosting a party. So Mark is an internationally acclaimed expert in host leadership, uh, a rich and diverse approach to building connections, bringing people together, um, setting frameworks and expectations, and then supporting everyone. And in this short session, Mark uh, is going to outline the rich metaphor for leading as a host. And he's going to point us to ways in which we can start applying it right away. So with that introduction, I'd like to hand over to Mark. Welcome, Mark. Thank you very much, Valerie. And good morning, everybody. Lovely to be with you today. Uh, so we have about half an hour. I'm going to outline the main ideas around leading as a host. And I'd like you to be thinking about, as we go through, applying that to something. Uh, so in this short session, we're going to have to unpack, time to unpack all that. But if you want to start thinking about a little leadership challenge or something you're facing right now that you'd welcome a new idea on or a, a, some new thoughts about, then find that in your, in your head, maybe even make a little note where you are. Uh, and as we go through, you can think about uh, applying the ideas I'll be presenting to that. If you want to ask questions as we go along, that's completely fine with me. You can write them in the chat, which I will be doing my best to monitor, uh, or you can just unmute yourself and shout out, and that's all great too. And there'll also be time for those of you lucky enough to be in the live broadcast of this for some questions at the end. So uh, thank you. Let's get on. Let's get on with the show then. So I am just going to share my uh, share my screen here. Um, and there we go, there's the right bit. Uh, about host leadership. So the first thing to offer you is this question. This is the most important question, I think, for leaders in the 21st century. Am I gonna step forward or step back next? Am I gonna step forward or step back next? And many people think that leadership is about stepping forward. And it is sometimes. And you step forward and you can make things happen and you can jolly people along and you can you know, get people moving. But at some point, you also have to step back. I mean, when you step back, you invite other people to step forward into the space you've created and then to get on with it. And we'll talk about this dynamic of stepping forward and back as we go through the session. But I'd like you to keep it in mind as we go along and connect it up with the other ideas that I'm presenting. So let's think about some classic leadership archetypes, if you like. And there's three I'm going to look at this morning. Hero, servant, and host. And on the screen now is the picture of the leader as hero. And I'm sure we're all familiar with this. This is an idea that's as old as humanity, and it's not going to go away anytime soon, uh, despite what all the leadership books say. So the leader is the hero. The leader is the person at the top of the pyramid. You see that on the screen. The person who all the information flows up the pyramid and the leader's instructions kind of flow down. Uh, and the leader can see further than anyone else, has more experience than anyone else, is more cunning than anyone else, is more, uh, is more intelligent and more connected than everyone else. And the leader is therefore the one to make the decisions, like the brain of the organization. And all the rest of it is just people doing things or doing what the leader tells them. Now, this is a, a classical idea. It's very old. Um, 
And in a crisis, that's kind of quite, it's quite a good thing to do, perhaps, as we'll see. But let's think about the upsides and downsides of, of a hero leader. Uh, one of the downsides for the leader is that you end up doing an awful lot of work. You're never off duty. It's always your responsibility as the hero. And unfortunately, the counterpart of that is that everybody else knows that and they're waiting for you to get on with it. So by being the hero, you're making work for yourself and you're probably taking work off everybody else. Now, in the long run, that's my guess is not a good place to be. Let's think about this in terms of relationships. If the leader is the hero, then who are the others? And uh, if you have the Zoom window open and you want to just write something in the chat, who are the others in, uh, if the leader is the hero? What would you say, you know, how would you define the other people in that relationship? We're thinking about the relationship between the hero leader and the others. And so Owen says deputies, if they're lucky and near the top of the pyramid, yes. <laughs> uh, what else, folks? What else have we got here? Anyway, if the leader is the hero, then, then what is the hero? Foot soldiers, says Kenji. People who need saving, Suzanne, yes. That's, uh, that's it. <laughs> Scenery, <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, people who need saving. So if we look at the idea of the leader as a hero, the hero in mythology turns up and saves the day. They save everybody from destruction. Uh, and whether that's Batman or uh, you know, the President of the United States or anybody else, the role of the hero is to be the, be the one who, who saves everyone else from their own stupidity and foolishness or whatever, or, or the, the threat from outside. So, and that's in a crisis, probably all right, but it's not good as a sustainable, uh, as a sustainable um, uh, thing. Now, I'm just saying that you're, say, you're seeing the next, you're not, you're not seeing the full thing. I'm going to stop the slide share. You're not seeing my proper screen. You're seeing my presenter screen. That's a bit puzzling. So I'm going to try and share something different. And how's that? Right, there we go, okay. Very confusing. Uh, so, sorry about that. So here is the leader as hero, uh, and uh, the, the relationship of the leader is with the rescued people, which ends up being a lot of work for the, for the hero, and perhaps not very much work for everyone else as they sit around waiting to be rescued. Now, in leadership archetype terms, there was a deliberate attempt back in the 70s and 80s to present a different version of this. And that's the leader as a servant. And some of you may have heard of the leader as a servant. And as you can see on the slide, this turns the pyramid upside down. It's a good idea. So the leader, rather than being at the top of the pyramid, is now supporting it at the bottom. And the leader as servant serves their team, serves their organization, stewards their organization and community. Um, and uh, it's a much different idea. It turns everything on its head. And Robert Greenleaf, who invented this idea, deliberately turned everything on its head to make us think in a different way about it. Uh, and it's a fantastic idea, and I wish it had caught on more, but it hasn't for various reasons. One of which is that people don't really understand what servants do. We don't have servants anymore, at least I don't, and, and I'd be slightly surprised if anyone on the call actually has servants in house as, as would have been the case a hundred years ago. So people don't understand what a servant does. Um, and it's actually much more, people think of a servant as something like a waiter whose job is to do what they're told. And actually that's not the case. Being a servant is a much more complex role than that. But because we're not familiar with the, the metaphor of servants, uh, the idea hasn't caught on as much as it might have done. So let's again think in relationship terms then. If the leader is the servant, then who are the others? And once again, you might like to uh, have a chat, uh, have a, a quick write in the chat if you're with me live, just to have a think about this. If the leader is the servant, who are the others? And Suzanne's on it straight away. She said the masters. Yes, that's right. 
And this one of the difficulties of, of servant leadership is what's the accountability? If the leader is serving the organization, who's in charge? And of course, Robert Greenleaf, who invented servant leadership, intended us to, you know, to think about that. It's a paradox. Um, but but it, most people don't have time for paradoxes in their busy lives. They want something that they can kind of connect with. So servant leadership, brilliant idea, um, but needs building on. And that is where the leader as host comes in. Our third leadership archetype for this morning and the last one. So the leader as a host, and you'll notice that the image that's on the screen there is not of a triangle, whether it's that way up or that way up. It's a circle. And the leader as a host brings people together around something, around a project or, or a, an organization or an issue. And the host is like the host of a party. If you, uh, and you'll notice in the picture there that in the circle, one of the people in the circle, it looks a little different to the others. You can perhaps have a look at it, identify the, the, the person that basically 12 o'clock has slightly darker coat on. <laughs> so the host is both one of the group and different. Uh, and this is, I think, always a tension in, in leadership. Are we leading the organization or are we in it? And the answer is, of course, we're both. But how we play that both, it offers us some very interesting possibilities and ideas. Um, so let's again think in relationship terms about this. And then if the leader is the host, then who are the others? Uh, and I hope it won't take uh, too long for somebody to suggest the, the answer to this. They're guests. That's right, Kenji, yes. So the relationship is host and guest. And the relationship of host and guest is a very interesting one. It, it's, it's nowhere like, it's not at all like the, the hero rescued people one. And it's not at all like the servant master one. The role of the host, and you can think about having a party and bringing people together, is both to kind of organize the thing and then make sure everybody has what they need to do the thing you want to do. Uh, and so it's, uh, there's some responsibility in this, but there's also some service and some providing things and some making sure that people understand what's going on and what's happening and, and what they're supposed to be doing and connecting them with other people and so on. And we've, uh, we've all had the experience of being a, a host, I think. We've all in organized parties or dinners or something like that. We've certainly all been to them. And we all know the difference between good hosting and bad hosting. And you might just like to think for a moment about what, uh, what makes the difference between good hosting and bad hosting. And uh, I, it, you, you might be thinking about something like, well, good hosts, make sure, understand, make sure you understand what's going on. You know who's there. They introduce you to other people. They make sure that everything that's needed is, is, is on supply. They've prepared the space. They've invited an interesting mix of people. They go around introducing folk, uh, encouraging them to, to connect and communicate, and also joining in with the party as well as organizing it. And we can carry that metaphor right through into organizing uh, a college or a project team uh, or any kind of uh, thing you want to think about. If the, what is the role of the leader? And I propose that a very good way of thinking about leadership for our 21st century lives is the host, the leader as the person who brings people together around something and make sure they have what they need to deal with it and also does a bit of dealing with it. Um, uh, and I think that that image of the circle and the image of the host and guest relationship is one that will stand us in very good stead in the years to come. Now, if you're thinking about a, a leadership challenge, you might just like to think for a moment about uh, who are your guests? If you're the host in this, in this leadership challenge, who are your guests? Think about that. Who are those people, the other people who you're hoping to engage? 
and maybe just make a little note about that. Who are the guests you're trying to engage? And then the next thing is to think about what are you hoping to encourage them to do? Hosts very rarely directly instruct people. They more like encourage and invite. And so uh, you should think about what do you, uh, who do you want to, what is the thing you're trying to encourage your guests to do? And then think of as a host, how could you do that? Based on your party giving and dinner hosting uh, experiences. So, but this is the wonderful thing about host leadership is that it is both a metaphor and a model. And there are lots of leadership models out there, which you have to learn. But host leadership starts with a metaphor, which you already know. So we're bringing lots of experience that you already have into the leadership field just by making this connection between hosting a party, leading an organization and saying, look, there's a lot of parallels here. That's an interesting thing to, to think about. So host leadership, I started working on host leadership in 2003 and over about a decade or so, I uh, went around talking to people along with my co-author, Helen Bailey, who you'll see at the top, uh, top right hand corner of the screen with myself there. Uh, and we talked to some people who we thought were leaders who were good hosts and we talked to some people who were hosts who we thought were good leaders. And there's a great mixture. Some of these, there's, there's this, these are pictures of a few of the people who crop up in my, in the book host that Helen and I wrote. Some of them you might have, you might have heard of. There's um, Chris Anderson who runs the TED organization uh, up there in front of the TED sign. He's a brilliant host leader. And what they achieve with a team of 25 people in New York is quite amazing in terms of global reach. Quite outstanding. There's Chris Bonington, the Everest Mountaineer, is there. We interviewed him. He's a very good host leader. Um, so there's other people who we researched, like Peggy Guggenheim in the bottom left, who is a socialite who connected artists and people who could buy art in the modern art world of New York of the 1950s. There's Ronnie Scott on the bottom right hand corner, an English jazz saxophonist uh, who's best known for his club that he started and is still the premier spot for mu jazz musicians to come together in the United Kingdom. Um, other people you, you won't know on this slide, but they, they are all in their own way, excellent host leaders and they all appear in our book. And after some period of gathering all their stories together, we, Helen and I were trying to figure out what do good hosts do? How can we kind of convey all this? And we came up with basically six roles of a host leader. And all we think that most things a host does can be encapsulated in these six roles, these six things that host, good hosts do. And, the, and they do them when they need doing. They don't do them all, all the time. So you can think of them ways to step forward in one of these roles and then step back again. So here on the screen is, are the six. The you know, host leader initiates things, which means picks priorities, gets things moving, focuses attention on the, the important areas. And in the party analogy, that's like deciding what sort of party it is we want to have. And there's a need for something or you know, I want to do something. But in the organizational leadership sphere, it looks like what's the priorities? What's the most important things that we start thinking about now? Key role for leader. Uh, the next role is the inviter role. You invite other people to get involved. Uh, and of course, with a party, you invite people to come to it. But as the leader, you invite people to get involved with these priorities. And we talk about engaging people with the soft power of invitation. That is the power of an outstretched hand of welcome. I'd like you to get involved with this, please, because you're bringing these aspects and experience and skills and personal strengths and qualities uh, that, that we need on this team. Uh, and the outstretched hand of soft power can be contrasted very briefly with the kind of clenched fist of hard power. And hard power is about coercing and forcing and saying, if you don't do this, then there'll be trouble. And you know, right at the moment, the British government is attempting to do this 
uh, with, I fear, little success. But um, soft power is a much better way to engage people. You can use hard power, but there's always a cost to it. You instruct people to do something or else, and they do it kind of grudgingly. You invite them to do it, and when they accept the invitation, they're already making you a commitment to their involvement and engagement. Uh, so there's a lot of good work around the idea of inviting people with soft power and engaging them. Next thing a good host leader does is create space. And that is in a party, that's the place where the party's gonna be. And of course that space will depend on the kind of party you wanna have. If it's very polite and formal, there'll be a dinner table and places laid. If it's gonna be a, let's stick some music on and get some drinks out and have a, have a hoolie, then, uh, then it's a different, you're gonna clear all the furniture out and make sure nothing break, breakable is very, very close by and get some music on. So, and in the same way that the kind of, you have to look at your space uh, as a leader, is, it, is the space you're creating suitable in physical terms, in psychological terms, for the thing you wanna have happen? And so there's physical space, uh, which is, is the place clean, tidy, fit for purpose, does it create the interactions you want to have? Are you taking care of it? And then there's a the psychological element of space, which is, is it safe enough? Is it kind of place where people can come to flourish? Is it a kind of place where people feel very cowed and, and afraid? I hope it isn't, of course. So thinking about the space that you're creating is vital. And this is not in most of the other leadership books, the importance of space, but it is where all the interesting interactions happen. And then the fourth thing a good host leader does is they are the gatekeeper. And uh, that means setting the boundaries and welcoming people in across the boundaries and explaining what the rules are and the norms and how we do things in, in here. And that can be in an, terms of an organization, you know, organizational cultures and, and, and ways of doing things, or it can be to do with very specific meetings or groups or what's this, What's this area for? Or this, what's this group for? What's that group for? How is it different? And uh, I could use a whole book to be written on this topic, but let me just first of all say that as a host to a party, you always welcome people at the door. It's part of your role. Uh, and it's for your role so you can see who's there and how they are, and you can explain to them what's going on and where everything is, and you can perhaps introduce them to somebody else. And then you welcome the next people. Uh, and uh, I, I very occasionally I find organization leaders who really grasp this. And you can tell that because they either have offices near the front door or they come out very often uh, and meet visitors and meet people and they're out and about and saying hello. And the non-host leaders are usually to be found in offices that are tucked away at the back of the place, defended by secretaries and very impossible to see. So, thinking about how are you engaging both with the, your staff and with visitors who are coming in what's your role in engaging that uh, and and, and um, explaining welcoming people across the threshold and explaining those rules and norms and understandings couple left the connector role is about introducing people to each other and uh, at a party, of course, everyone knows the host has to introduce people so they, they, they can get along and they can meet new people and create new connections and have a good time. But in organizational terms, connecting people with each other is a strategy of sharing your power. If you don't introduce people to each other, you route everything through you. And that maybe make, might make you feel very important, but it can also, it, it gets wearing because you're having to deal with everything. That's a hero strategy. The host strategy is introduce people to each other and tell them to get on with it uh, and not go through you unless something comes up. Um, so it's a power sharing and uh, idea and, and you're building know-how in the organization without you having to do it all. Remember the host's role is to bring people together uh, so that everybody is involved and engaged uh, to the max. And finally, a good host leader will join in, co-participate. And that means that you don't just lead the organization, you also participate in it. And there's all sorts of different ways to do that, but it can mean um, do, uh, doing a bit of the work occasionally. 
So in some retail organizations, they have uh, a thing where at Christmas, at least, I don't know whether this will happen this year, but at Christmas, everyone in the headquarters goes out to work in the shops because they're incredibly busy. Uh, and that's more than just a few extra hands on the coal face. That is the people in head office actually getting a bit of experience of what it's like out there in the stores and what the priorities are, what the pressures are. You can talk to people, you can be involved and engaged, and you can build some wider relationships. So uh, you can think about what that means in, in, uh, in terms of colleges, about how do you participate in the college as well as, as, well as lead it. And there's all sorts of uh, uh, ideas for how to do that. And remember, we had the idea of stepping forward and stepping back uh, in all of those roles. So you can make something happen or to step back in a role means to have a have a little think. It's the equivalent of on the in the party, just standing at the edge of the room without talking to anyone and thinking, how's it going? Is everyone engaged? Is there anyone who's not engaged? Is the wine about to run out? Has somebody spilt peanuts on the carpet? What do we need to do next? And this this stepping back time is not inactive at all for you as a leader. It is time for you to take stock and think about what needs to happen next and which role do I need to pick up next uh, and how am I going to encourage even more action uh, and engagement with the group. So we're coming towards the end of our uh, half hour together. Um, there are time, it's time for a, a few questions if uh, people who are here would like just to ask a question either in the chat or just unmute yourself uh, and we can uh, we can uh, deal with anything now. So in terms of technology, how do you see that changing the way that people can be an effective leader, a good leader? Does <clears throat> that require a different way of thinking? Technology? Is there a particular technology you're thinking of or just... Well, okay. staring at Zoom, for example, seems like very. <laughs> I, I think it's very. I think it's very interesting, and I think actually it makes it easier, uh, potentially, to be a host, with because you can you can sit. I'm sitting opposite about twenty people at the moment uh, on this Zoom call, and that's not a perspective you can ever get in a real room. Uh, we don't, you know, in, in any table you are facing some people and not others, uh, and so I think there's a ch there is a chance for engagement. Also, I don't have to spend time travelling around. I can be on Zoom uh, and be connecting with different people. So I think we, we're going to have to learn to use the technology well. There's a skill to using Zoom, and, and there are other technologies appearing. Um, the thing I th we, we shouldn't be using it for is micromanagement. I think as a host leader, you build a relationship with your guests, your team, and then you have to basically trust them to start with to get on with it and, and, and support them. Um, and, and there are opportunities in technology for micromanaging, which I would recommend you don't, you don't do, but there are also opportunities for making, helping people connect. And that connector thing has become dramatically different and perhaps easier uh, with Zoom and other technologies, you know, Slack and, uh, and those messaging type of, uh, type of technologies uh, where people can engage you know, engage when they want to. And I like that. I think handing power to people to say, you know, at, at a team meeting and everyone has to come. And that's a fair expectation. But then you've got other ways where people can engage when they want to, when they need to, uh, and so on. And that's giving people choice, which is something I like as a leader. I want to give, you know, I want to be giving people, my people choice and I want them to let them work the way they want to, by and large, as long as, of course, we're all achieving the things that we need to achieve. So I think, take, thanks for the question, Owen. It's a, it's, a good, it's a good thing to think about because this, this year particularly, the technology is having a really different impact. And I think we're still learning about how that works, to be honest. Hello, Kenji. Um, so just to ask, following on from Owen's question, do you think that the, the lockdown and the fact that many teams are now working remotely affect the host model in any way and what should we be thinking about? I not fundamentally no. although I was hearing yesterday about some a team from a, another leadership consultant who's in organizations where teams have not met even on Zoom since March. That's quite shocking. Here we are in September. 
So there are people who are not using the technology and that's clearly uh, a bad thing. But I think with the technology, I think you can do an awful lot of what you could do and you can do some other different things as well. So working on, there are platforms and even Google documents or mural boards where you can effectively be working on, as if you had a big board with post-it notes and everyone can be writing them, moving them around and engaging with them. You know, we can do all sorts of collaborative working and the platforms for that are improving all the time. So I, I, think, I, I think the six roles still absolutely stand. Maybe they play out slightly differently if you're working fundamentally in a remote way. On the other hand, I participated last month in a 24 hour online solution focused coaching and therapy conference with sessions every hour and the leadership being translated, transferred around the world over 24 hours and sessions coming from Asia and Australia and America and Europe um, and people coming together in dramatically new ways that were just impossible without the technology and basically all for free. And I think that sort of model offers us really radically different ways to engage. And I'm looking forward to exploring that. There's a question, Valerie has a thing. I just want to deal with a question in the, in the chat, um, uh, which is about, from Suzanne, how do you cope if the party you're hosting is getting out of hand? That's a really interesting question. It's a really, and you, you, it, this is where you come back to the metaphor. If you were hosting a, a real party, a physical party, that was getting out of hand, what would you do? Well, what I would do would be turn all the lights on, stand on the table and shout, Oi! And everyone stops and looks. And now you have the chance to say, look, just a minute, something's going wrong here. We need to, we need to address this. And uh, I think that's exactly the same basic tactic holds good, but you need ways of getting people's attention. Uh, and uh, so what's the organization equivalent of standing on the table, turning all the lights on and shouting? Uh, I don't know, um, but, it, but it, it is, you know, hosts often don't want attention from everybody, but just occasionally you need it. You need everyone, you know, everyone look at me now. And I, just for a moment, I'm gonna be a bit of a hero. I'm gonna take control because something, because something important is happening. And then you take control, you reorganize the situation and then let go again. So this is now it's a dramatic stepping forward to stand on the table and, and do this. But it's in your repertoire. It's in your ar armory, if you like. That's a not, not a good word. It's in your repertoire of things you might do. But only, I would only do that in, in a real crisis. Um, and uh, there's another question from Ethelinda. Oh, hello, Ethelinda. Uh, how do you deal with conflict over digital platforms? Ha! <laughs> Uh, you, I, I presume you mean pe people in conflict rather than conflict over which digital platform we should use, which I've also experienced. Um, and uh, I'd, I'd say, uh, f f first of all, my way of dealing with conflict as a host is to usually take people to one side. You don't want to deal with conflict out in the open unless it's absolutely the last resort for me. So I'm, I want to, to, you know, talk to people, uh, get a private meeting, say, look, what's going on here? You know, seems to me that there's something not quite right. And sort it out, you know, in, in the quiet of the corner, rather than in, in the middle of the circle with people squaring up to each other. That's what I'd want to do at a party. And that's what I'd want to do in an organisation as well. So we're coming to the end of the time. Uh, Valerie and uh, Kenji. So thanks very much for uh, inviting me here today. And for the recorded session, I think we're coming to the end. Thanks, everyone.